So at the beginning of the semester, I introduce the students to the idea of Abraham, Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And essentially, it's the different levels that a human being would need to reach, his term is self-actualization. The what, what my purpose as a human being is in the world, essentially. So, you can't get to self-actualization until you go through these certain levels. So it's a pyramid. And the base of that pyramid is physiological needs. I need to take care of my health, my, my ability to live. And this is basics of food, water, shelter, uh, air, things like that. Things, things to keep the person alive. And they do throw in reproduction, and I suppose that would be there on a grander scale. Like, if you go from a caveman perspective, uh, there, there were small tribes, and if there's only so many people in the tribe, they need to reproduce to keep their tribe going. They, they need that to uh, have a succession of generations. So, this is the base of Maslow's hierarchy, is keep yourself alive. And then the next is, uh, like, love and belonging. I don't know, I, I don't have these memorized real well in my, my mind, but essentially, you're going through these different levels to the point where, if you follow these, you will be able to be a self-actualized human being. You will be able to reap the benefits of what you are and what you can do. And so as an art teacher, I'm trying to get these kids to what Maslow considers self-actualization because arguably that's where art is. That's where the, the art work comes into play. But you can't get that if you don't have the resources, the support, the the freedom to explore, the the baseline of uh, how things work, or a how to see relationships between information and practicality. So here's all these things that Maslow says you must achieve. And there's five different layers to the pyramid to get to self-actualization. And ultimately, I'm leading the kids up this. I'm, I'm having them go step by step up the, uh, the hierarchy of needs to get them to the point where they, fi they figure out, okay, this is what's important in life uh, to me. This is what I am capable of doing. This is what I excel at. These are my interests, aptitudes, experiences, uh, and my memories and uh aspirations lead me in a direction if I if I can recognize myself well enough if I know what I am I can get to the point where I am developing this sense of needs so I'm leading the students up this hierarchy of needs and to do this I need to go through all these levels which are like so I discuss the physiological but then like I need to establish safety in my classroom I need to be able to make kids feel safe ultimately uh, earn their trust like make the room so that they don't feel like they're th they have any threat from other students from me uh, comforting them about on using these different materials and learning these different techniques and ultimately getting them to be okay with being in the space that I'm in. And ultimately, if I can't do the physiological, if this kid didn't get enough sleep the night before or uh, they didn't get breakfast or somebody hollered at them or something like that, uh, the, the physiological can come in already damaged per se and so 
I need to get them to this level of feeling that they're physiologically good in order to keep them safe. And when you've got uh, students, kids, children that are in this unsafe space, like maybe things aren't so good at, at home, or like I said, maybe they just stayed up too late playing video games, or they, they, uh, mom didn't have time to go to the store because she, like she's taking care of everything. So maybe they didn't have the breakfast the kid wants because maybe they're being real picky or maybe they just didn't want breakfast, whatever, whatever. So these kids come in with their base level not intact. And that means that getting to this level of safety is already jeopardized. They, they're already not in a space where they feel safe because their physiological needs were not taken care of. So let's say that they did come in and they, this safety also takes time. Like being at a new school, I don't have the trust, the, the safety, the, 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 the reputation of being safe. So I have to build this up new. I am introducing myself to literally over a hundred new kids and they need to suss out what I am if I am trustworthy, is he making this place safe? And so this takes time because they need exposure. They need uh, experiences with me. We need to do things together in which we build trust. Then the next level is love and, love and belonging. And if I've done my job right, that should come right along with. I should be supportive. I should be able to listen to these kids. I should be able to uh, understand them and recognize them enough that everything that I do is in their best interests. But at, some, at times, because I don't know these kids and because they don't know me and all the aforementioned uh, possibilities for error, love and belonging can takes a really long time. And there's you're trying to figure out these kids because they've got their own little lives and they've got their own little personalities that make them who they are and uh, and their behaviors. And so if I don't understand where they're coming from, who they are, what these behaviors mean, I can make errors. I don't know everything and I don't know how to deal with all this. But ultimately, I have to have the strength and foundation that I can fall uh, back on as a generality. What is the best thing that I can do for as many of these students as possible, the, the greater good? And so this takes so much time and like the kids need to learn you and you need to learn them. And so these are the kids that are considered the bad kids, the ones that need more effort is really what it comes down to. They're not bad kids. These are not that type. I'm not saying there there aren't bad kids in the world, because like some are, they've got more than I know what to deal with, and they don't know how to deal with anybody else, and that's essentially what bad is, and reacting negatively, having a negative outlook. This is what we mean by bad, and so it takes time to get this love and belonging and so I have to assert my efforts more so on the kids that are not acclimating well as opposed to the ones who do. Some of them click into place and they, they get how to be in the classroom and you want to give them those support but these other students draw a lot of attention, they need a lot of attention because they don't know how to make good choices. That's what attention in a classroom is, if it's not positive, is, okay, you don't know what you're doing in this situation, so now I have to intervene to help you make good choices so that you can be around everybody else, that you're not hurting yourself, that you're not hurting others, distracting others, whatever have you. But essentially, the ones that are clicking into place, the ones that have, uh, achieve the physiological, the safety, the love and belonging, 
then you can start building a steam and they can start building a steam they they're starting to get worth because they are being productive they're not uh, exerting their efforts and energies in lots of different directions in wide span like you know explosion they they're now directed now now they they can refine this it's like using a knife like somebody who knows how to use a knife can be very skilled and do some amazing things woodcrafters surgeons uh, the guy is cutting the sushi you know like these people have worked with the knives and know what they're doing. Knife throwers, like they know, they know, they worked enough with this that they understand what it is and how to use it. Whereas if somebody is very clumsy or doesn't know how to use a knife, it can be potentially dangerous to them. And if you take it, an infant, you know, they don't have the wherewithal to understand what this knife is. like there's a high potential that they will hurt themselves. So these, this art media, the, these, this art work, you, you don't go giving them to like, it's, it's like a weapon. It's, if you use it correctly, you can really project yourself in life. You can really, uh, succeed. But if you don't know how to use these things, then you can hurt yourself and or others. And ultimately, some just don't know how to use it. They're fumbling around with it. These are the ones that have not been able to achieve the physiologic, physiological safety, love and belonging to get to this esteem. But the ones who do start finding a worth in it because they put enough time in to realize, okay, this can do something. I can do something with this. And that's, you know, uh, people know innately what is good. It takes things, uh, negative situations, uh, toxic situations, um, trauma that dissuades what from the the understanding of away from what is good. So if I held up uh, a scribbly picture. And then I hung up or held up like uh, a great work of art right next to it. And I asked which one's better or which one is good. People know because there's a time, there's an effort, there's, there's a craftsmanship to this. And only when this self-esteem is built do people in general want to run with it. If you feel good, if you feel successful, if you have all of your your needs met. I have the the understand the understanding of the media and the techniques. I have that base knowledge and I can experiment with them. And when I experiment with them, the I have success in these in these experiments. And when you have successes, you recognize that it's good. Others recognize it's good and you want to do it more. You want to build that. Find its worth. And this brings you into the self-actualization. Now, here's the thing. Art, generally speaking, is teaching this. And the media that we're using is drawing or painting or sculpting or whatever have you. We're trying to get this problem-solving success uh, in answering the problems and having a, a subject matter, an object, a physical object that other people can confirm that is good. I understand what you're communicating. It communicates a lot. It communicates well. And when that is seen and that is understood, then you understand how things work together. Now this can be done in different ways. Like it could be a mechanic. It could be a, a dancer. It could be a businessman. It could be a doctor. But taking these tools, having, building your knowledge continually, experimenting with them, questioning them, coming to conclusions and answers, projects you into a progressive person. That's what progress is, is I am learning something. And that's ultimately what the function of art education is. So 
these students are learning, embodying, practicing what Maslow was uh, theorizing in his hierarchy of needs. And so understanding this and how it works in the classroom becomes vital for, to, for the success of an art program or any program for that matter. Art just gives you the freedom to ask the questions as opposed to following a procedure. There are procedures, that's what we call techniques, but once you understand how to use those procedures, then you have the question of what are you gonna do with it? What, what interests do you have? Let's experiment with this. What aptitudes, what uh, experiences, what aspirations? What do you want to do? Okay, let's figure that out. Let's explore it. Let's develop it. Let's follow this process of development, which is learned through art. And that's that's the, the hard thing to communicate, is the process. And at low levels, particularly middle school, grade school, uh, junior high, high school, whatever, you can measure this. Did you put in a horizon line? Did you put in a vanishing point? Uh, are there things showing diminishment? Is there stuff showing uh, getting close, medium, far, uh, having shadows, shading? And when you put all these together, you start to understand the basics and then you can start playing with it. Then you can start looking at things like, oh, what happens if I move the light source to here? or what if the it's coming from a weird angle, or maybe I'm looking at it from a real low vantage or high vantage, or uh, maybe I'm trying to show an emotion or an experience. And this is what is often referred to in the art world as the aesthetics, the the philosophy behind art, the the bigger thought. So this is what I'm trying to teach. But like I said, getting getting through those first three layers of the hierarchy of needs becomes the, the majority of the work as an art teacher. And this is work as opposed to like uh, it being hard, you know, like I get kids saying this is hard. Well, it's time consuming. And yes, it's that too. And But time consuming is not also hard. You're, you don't have to think about it. You don't have to make adjustments. You're, you're not always being a reflective practitioner as they called it in college. You have to change. You have to adapt. And that takes work. So this is what's been on my mind thank you for your time do more do better